tell us what intelligent design is that distinguishes it from some kind of effort to sneak God in by some back door? Sure. Uh, the intelligent design... Uh, parenthetically, yeah. just yeah. one word. Yeah. That's definitely not Steve's intention. In, in this book, in intelligent design, it's not a way to bring in a theological argument. It is a scientific approach, purely and absolutely valid, scientifically. And one can agree with it or disagree with it, but one doesn't have to reject it insofar as theology making an illegal move, because that's not what he's doing. That's not what you, oh, yeah, good. Let, let me just sketch the argument sure. briefly, and then we can just discuss it. Um, the, the, the big discovery of the 1950s and 60s was that the DNA molecule encodes information right. in a roughly digital or alphabetic or typographic form. This why, do you, was, why do you use the term digital? Well, because in computer science, we have characters, you know, zeros and ones. I see. I see. This, this, was, this is Crick, 1957. It's the sequence hypothesis. He realized that, that the information in DNA, or the, the, the chemical subunits of DNA called nucleotide bases, were functioning like alphabetic characters in a written text or like the zeros and ones in a section of computer code. It, that is to say, it's not, it wasn't their chemical properties that gave them their function, but rather their specific arrangement in accord with an independent symbol convention, which was later explicated in the form of what we call the genetic code. So we had genetic text functioning according to a code. So it really it was, was a pure, it was, it was pure information. It, it, this is a genuine information storage system. Crick, by the way, was a code breaker in World War II. So this is a fascinating is an application of the information science system of molecular biology. Now what we, this is, and this is the argument that I make, is that what we know from experience is that information, whether we find it in a hieroglyphic inscription or a paragraph in a book or a information embedded in a radio signal or in a section of computer code, whenever we find information and we trace it back to its ultimate source, we always come to a mind, not a material process. And what I do in the book in Darwin's Doubt and my prior book, Signature in the Cell, is show that these uh, undirected evolutionary mechanisms that have been proposed as an explanation for the origin of information fail for various reasons. We've talked about the reason the Darwinian mechanism fails because it can't search the space when it's so vast. The, the odds are overwhelmingly against it. So if we, if we, from a materialistic evolutionary standpoint, don't have any explanation for the origin of the information that's necessary to build new biological form. And yet we do know from our uniform and repeated experience, which is the basis of all scientific reasoning, of a source of information, of a cause of the origin of information. That, that cause is intelligence or mind. And so what I've argued in both Darwin's Doubt and Signature in the Cell is that what we're seeing in life is evidence of the activity of a directing mind in the history of life. 